December 7, 1941. The attack on Pearl Harbor. The attack that sent Americans to join World War II. 16.1 million Americans answered the call to serve. As the men left to fight, they left behind their jobs. So women filled in, taking jobs that were previously deemed too dangerous. They helped in the factories, served as radio operators, flew military aircraft across the country, ran the farms, worked as laboratory technicians, tested new planes, and even trained anti-aircraft gunners. Even with those jobs, women yearned for more. They wanted to go overseas and fight. They wanted to be pilots, soldiers, nurses, and marines. Jacqueline Cochran was one of these women. Jacqueline Cochran, nicknamed Jackie, was born May 11, 1906 in Florida. After growing up in poverty, she took a job as a beautician, so she moved to New York and made friends and clients with high-profile people. While attending a party hosted by one of these people, she met Floyd Audman. She told him about her ambitions and her dreams. Her enthusiasm ensnared Floyd, and he told her the economic depression would be challenging for her job, and suggested that she should learn to fly to get an edge over her competition. She opened up and told him all her hopes and dreams and ambitions and bubbled over with enthusiasm. Well, this caught Floyd's attention, and uh, he was mesmerized by her. And uh, it wasn't a case where this was an older man looking at a younger woman saying, oh, I'm going to make something of you. This was a fellow who said, wow, this is a gal that's going somewhere, and uh, decided that he wanted to, to be a part of that and play a role in it. Jacqueline, always good at adapting and a quick learner, earned her pilot's license in three weeks. Quoted from Jacqueline herself, I might have been born in a hovel, but I was determined to travel with the wind and the stars. She fell in love with flying in airplanes. Two days after getting her license, she went on a solo flight to Canada, learning to use the compass and reading maps as she flew. During her time period, aviation was a very male-dominated industry. This didn't stop Jackie. She didn't want to only be the best female pilot, she wanted to be the best pilot, period. Jackie threw herself into aviation and air competitions. Throughout the year of 1933, Jackie learned and practiced every flight maneuver. In 1934, Jackie competed in the Mac Robertson London to Australia Air Race, and she did it in the GB, a highly dangerous aircraft. To quote Jackie, The cute nickname is a sham. They were killers. There were very few pilots who flew the GSBs and then lived to talk about it. Jimmy Doolittle was one, I was another. Sadly, she did not win the competition due to a mislabeling of switches, but she only became more determined. Her determination won the heart of Floyd Audman, and they married in 1936. He was impressed with her, and what he did when they got married, uh, he helped her out in every endeavor that she wanted to attend, whether it's flying or her business or anything like that. And, and uh, he, he sort of used Jackie as a hobby. Jackie Cochran became the first woman to win the Bindex, attain a flying speed of 842 miles per hour, take off and land an aircraft carrier, pilot a bomber across the Atlantic Ocean, receive the Distinguished Service Medal, serve as president of the Federation Aeronautic International, and the first woman to break the sound barrier. As the world began to conflict and the countries began to go to war, Jacqueline grew a strong desire to join the fight and make a difference. But the government wouldn't let females fight overseas. If a woman wanted to help, they could do the jobs the men left behind. While working in a factory was important, it wasn't enough to satisfy Jackie. She knew qualified male pilots were needed to fight in the war. Because of this, the Army was desperate for pilots to deliver aircraft to flight schools. Cochran wrote to First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and proposed a women's aviation division. Eleanor Roosevelt gave Jackie her full support. This is not a time when women should be patient. We are in a war and we need to fight it with all our ability and every weapon possible. Women pilots in the particular case are a weapon waiting to be used, quoted from Eleanor Roosevelt, 1942. Eleanor passed Jackie on to Army Air Force General H. Arnold. Despite the support of the First Lady, General Arnold shot Jackie's idea of a women's flying division down. But as the years went on and the war got worse, General Arnold reconsiders Jackie's idea. He sent her overseas to oversee the Wings for Britain program in 1941. Jackie and 25 hand-picked female pilots flew to England. We bring Miss Cochran to the microphone to say a few words. The greatest thrill of my life was acting as first officer in the bomber which I brought from America to Great Britain. I've been flying for nine years, and it's always been as a sporting event with me and for my own entertainment. For once, I've done something that I feel is a contribution to a cause that I'm in sympathy with, with Great Britain. I hope I may be privileged to do a great deal more. Today I have seen the most magnificent thing that I ever hope to see, a very large group of women, the Women's Auxiliary Air 
for us. And they are doing a job and the most diversified work that I've ever seen done by women. They're relieving hundreds of men, really doing a man's job, each and every one, and to help their country. And I wish it were possible that I could stay here and help them. But maybe in America I can do enough to make up for what I can't do here. While overseas, another woman was proposing Jackie's idea. When Jackie returned to America to discover that someone else had been given the task of ferrying aircraft in a new program called the WAF, or Women's Auxiliary Ferrying Squadron, Jackie was furious. Never one to give up, Jackie founded a campaign to get the military to revisit her original proposal. Jackie Cochran was not a mild, meek person. Uh, she had a steamroller personality. Uh, if she wanted something, she absolutely let everybody know she wanted it and how she expected to get it. Her proposal for a women's aviation division now included military training and roles beyond ferrying. By 1943, Jackie was appointed to the general staff of the U.S. Army and was to direct the Women's Air Force Service Pilots or the WASP. She was to oversee the training of female pilots. In the end, the WASPs became part of the WASP and were under the leadership of Jacqueline Cochran. 25,000 women applied to the WASP program, 1,830 were accepted for training, and only 1,074 earned their silver wings and became WASP. The women would pay their way into training and if they didn't make it, they would pay their own way back home. The major priority for the WASP were still ferrying missions. They flew more than 60 million miles of operational flights, which included the ferrying of aircraft from factories to air bases, towing targets for live anti-aircraft artillery, and transporting cargo. The pilots delivered 12,650 aircraft from ferrying missions alone, which made up over 50% of the U.S.-built combat aircraft during the time of World War II. Unfortunately, the WASPs were hired under civil service, not as part of the military as Jacqueline had intended. The program began with the idea of militarizing later, as it would require an act of Congress. But just as the bill went to Congress, the need for female pilots decreased. The decision to end the WASP became official on December 20th, 1944. But General Arnold recorded, At any future total effort, the nation can count on thousands of its young women to fly any of its aircraft. On December 7, 1944, during a speech at Sweetwater, Texas, General Arnold said, WASP have completed their mission. Their job has been successful. The Air Force will long remember their service and their final sacrifice. After being unceremoniously deactivated without benefits, the WASP disbanded. The records were sealed and marked as classified and stored away for more than 30 years. Because of this, historians had no access to the records of the WASP and they were left out of many official World War II stories. 38 WASPs were killed while flying in service, but they received no recognition, no honors, no gold star in the window, no benefits, and no American flag covering their coffin. WASPs were denied veteran status for 35 years. 35 years after the war, they received their medals and notification of their veteran status through the mail. While General Arnold promised the WASPs would never be forgotten by the Air Force, sadly, they were for many years. I think 25th anniversary of the disbandment of the WASP, which occurred in 1944, and this is later, I'm up, up at Edwards, so I came down, and she said, would you come down and give a talk to the WASP about current, you know, kind of flying and airplanes and technology? So I did, and I met a, a probably there's about 400 of them down there, and they were really, really classy gals. I'd never met too many of them, but see, there, there were so few of them were, that were able to continue flying after the after they were disbanded that very probably not over a half a dozen that I knew that kept on flying. Jackie was one of them. After the war, Jackie continued flying until her health no longer allowed her to. When she eventually died in 1980, shortly after the death of her husband, Jackie held more speed, altitude, and distance records than anyone in the world, male or female. Jacqueline Cochran took a stand for women in aviation and changed aviation history forever.